Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to share with you my top three tips for starting to handle your own personal finance. I'm not a financial advisor, so everything that you hear today is more of my own personal experience. So take it with a grain of salt, do your research, and do your due diligence, of course. And so I think at the end of the day, we all want to work less um, and save more money so that we can perhaps retire earlier or have more money for traveling or just to better prepare for the future. And so this video is going to be a very broad overview of how I handle my finances. I don't really go into depth about the different platforms here. And I'm leaving that up to you to do your own research and to try it out. The beautiful thing is that these platforms are completely free. Of course, there's always additional services that you can sign up for, but it's not mandatory or required. And personally, I don't have any big businesses. I don't freelance at the moment or anything of that sort. I have my day job, so I have this influx of income. And then I'm tracking my efflux or my spendings. And that's kind of how I'm managing it nowadays. Um, in the past, and then I'm sure certainly in the future, it will change. But I think it's relevant for people that might be doing some freelance work or um, have other sources of income because it's kind of the same general idea, you know, watching influx and watching efflux, right? And so this video is just going to be you know money for my day job and then you can see how i'm observing or watching my finances and so if you want to see the different um platforms that i use feel free to look in the description below and you can see what i'm going to be talking about just to save you a little bit of time and so um yeah if you like this video just support me with a, a like or a subscribe and um if you have a better way of doing something by all means please share with me i always appreciate that you know to learn something new and of course we're all in this boat together so why not help each other get ahead right so let's get into it and we're gonna head over to my first tip we have a platform called personal capital and of course I censored out all the things that I didn't want to share so this tool allows you to get a bird's-eye view of all your finances and it's very rewarding to see that you're moving towards a positive net worth as opposed to being in the negative, which I used to be. And you can see all your assets and liabilities, which is basically positive and negative monies. I think just draw your attention to the left section here. I think that's more important. The cash section is like more of your liquid money, things that you can spend right away and a way to divide out your money for what you want to spend it on for that month. The investment section is more of a longer term game. So on this uh, part, you see I have Fundrise, M1, Capital One, that sort of thing where my money is just earning interest. And the last section is credit, which is basically going to be your credit cards and things that you're spending money on. I'll touch more about this on the third tip, but I use personal capital just to get a big picture Beyond that, I don't really use any other tools that they have here. It's just a very simple way for me to look at my money quickly without having to, you know, run through every platform and do math. There is another tool by Intuit. I've used it in the past. It's not something that I use now because it had a lot of ads. That's it for the personal capital. Let's head on over to the second tool. So on to tip number two. This is an app called Smart Receipts. It's a free app and it's available on the Play Store as well as the Apple Store. It's a great tool to track all your different spendings. And the reason that I use this tool is because it helps you be mindful of every dollar that you spend because what I do is I take a picture of the receipt. You basically enter, you know, the value that you spent. As you spend money, you track it. It helps you be more mindful of like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't spend this much. And uh, you can take pictures of your receipt, scan in here, and they also have a feature that you're able to upload it to the cloud. And the last thing is that it lets you generate reports, right, into PDF, CSV, or zip reports if you want to do that. I think when we're using credit cards, we kind of lose track of how much we spend because really it's just a piece of plastic. It's not like you're writing it down on paper. I can see how much I spend every single month. 
and it makes a nice division to all the different spendings. There's a lot of different charts that you can see how much you spend per day. And I really recommend that you give it a try. It's gonna be tedious at first, entering all the different spendings that you do, like gas, groceries, restaurants. Eventually you get used to it, and it's kind of a cool thing just to look back and see that you did really good one month or another. And then if you're living in a traveling to another country, you can enter the amount, right? And you can see how much you're spending at home versus in another country. Give it a try, see how you like it. If you have a better one, just let me know. For my last tip, I wanted to talk about credit cards. It's also good to have a strategy about spending your money. First up, you can see that I have a Capital One account. This is actually my influx account. So all the money that I've gained, all the money that I get from work, it goes into direct deposit into this 360 saving account. And then the 360 checking is where my liquid money would sit. Let's say I have $100,000 in my savings. And then in my checking, I have about 1500. So anything that I'm not spending, I put into my savings and it does earn a nice chunk of interest. Not much, but anything is better than nothing, right? With my checking account, I only put enough to last me one month. So I don't go over budget. It's my own cap. So 1500 should more than enough get me by, you know, including rent, groceries, eating out, that sort of thing. It's a self check for me. If of, of course, if I need more money, I can transfer from savings over to checking very quickly, literally takes less than 20 or 30 seconds to transfer the money because it's the same bank account, you don't have to worry. And so Capital One is like my influx account. The other two, Quicksilver and Venture One, those were something that I've tried in the past. It's not something that I'm using nowadays because I have another credit card that I'm, I'm using to earn rewards. But general picture, I have an account that's influx like Capital One. It's also good to link these accounts to your other accounts so that they transfer money quickly. Let's talk about the Eflux account. My Eflux account is with Chase Bank. I have two cards with Chase Bank. One is the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the other one is Chase Sapphire Reserve. The reason I have two is that the reserve card is meant to earn points on traveling and dining because those earn 3x points. And in order to maximize all my other spendings, like getting gas, going to the groceries, ordering stuff on Amazon, I would use my Chase Freedom account because that gives me cash back. I have only two cards that I use and this is basically my Outflux account. Other than that, it's gonna be cash in my wallet. If you remember, with smart receipts, we can track our spendings with cash as well. That's why I have that smart receipts app to track all the outflux as well. The nice thing with Chase is that they have the rewards program and there's a nice sign up bonus in the beginning and I'll link it down below, but I believe it was spending 4,000 in three months and they give you, I think 60,000 points or something like that. And buying different plane tickets is also more worthwhile on their portal. So it's just something to be mindful of. And then they also have chase offers. When you're earning points, you also wanna see how much you're earning, right? So if you go into one of the credit cards and you open up one of the, expand one of the charges, you can see you've earned 1x or 3x or 5x even so you can always watch out for different uh, specials that they have you always want to hit your maximum gains right so 3x is the highest for chase sapphire reserve and i kind of just check sometimes to make sure i already know most of the time that oh this is a restaurant or this is buying a plane ticket therefore i should use this card so just another way to be mindful the other one is the cashback card so that one you don't have to follow too much you just kind of earn a percentage this is basically my credit card strategy one is influx which is capital one one is outflux which is chase and then lastly i do have a third bank account called Charles Schwab. I should link this in a new tip, but I'm just gonna keep it to three tips. Charles Schwab is an awesome card that allows you to 
withdraw money from any ATM around the world. You don't get charged on the US side of things, is what I understand, but you might get charged still on that country. On the US side of thing at least, Schwab will reimburse you for those withdrawals that you made. Like if it's a dollar fifty to withdraw money from uh, a Colombian bank, for example, Schwab Bank will reimburse you that dollar fifty. So Schwab is more of like a card I use when I'm traveling and it's not something that I use every day. It does earn a nice interest, but I try to separate Separate all my different cards so that I can keep the strategy simple. That's that's basically the general overall uh, approach of how I'm spending my money and how I'm keeping track of it. So that's going to be it. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the comments to join our Discord channel. I'm always hanging in there with my friends. So thanks for watching this video and look forward to other videos about diving more in depth to some of the platforms that I use, including Funrise, M1. Thanks so much and have a good one.